Okay, now that we've uh, laid out and organized our development, I want to talk about some of the detailing issues associated with it and some of the things that you can uh, edit. Now, we've noticed that um, some of the tools that you have available uh, here, uh, one of the things that we can do as we look at this model, and this model has some uh, pretty big flaps on it, uh, if I wanted to, I could come in and I could do some flap editing. Okay, now before, I'm going to change this to uh, 18, and I'm going to apply it to all flaps. Okay, and you notice that it made all the flaps slightly smaller. If we wanted to get dramatic, I could make it 8, and apply it to all flaps and you'll see how they've gotten a lot smaller, but that's a really small flap size. I would never do a flap size of 8. Uh, I'm going to go back up to 15, which is almost, uh, I use that a lot, if somewhere between 15 and 20, depending on the size of the model, and that's good. Now, that is a global flap adjustment, but you notice that as I go over to these edges, I can actually uh, go in and change flaps individually, okay? Uh, now, one of the things that you could also do in your model, and you might want to do it sometimes, is that you can do a flap switch, right? So I'm going to come over here to switch, and you notice that this flap goes to that edge. This flap here, it tells me it goes to that edge. Now, sometimes you may want to change or even add a flap where none exists, flap location. Now, if you want to do a switch, all you have to do is just click on that, and you notice, you notice that the flap is on that edge, and now it went back to that edge. If I came over here and did a flap switch, here it'll change the locations of the flaps from that piece right there to there. So you can change the locations of the flaps if you want to, okay, to the corresponding edges, okay. Um, you can also change the shape of your flaps, okay. And here you have um, you have the height right here that is uh, set up, and you can also change the angle. And if you go into manual mode, you can actually change the the angle of your flaps manually. And you notice when you click on the edge, it activates the flap. So let's say I wanted this flap right here to be 10 degrees and 45 degrees left and right and I go over here and click that and you notice that that adjusts there. I could change that one also to 10 degrees, go back here and it changes that flap and I could click on these and it will automatically uh, go to that dimension. So sometimes if you have a really tight area in your development you may want to change your flap sizes. So I'm going to switch this back to 45, tap 45, and I'm going to change these back, okay, and so you can adjust your flaps. Now, once you've laid out, uh, out your model, one of the things that you want to do is to add your edge IDs. You notice that we don't see those here. You get that from your 2D menu, and you come over uh, to show edge ID, show edge ID, okay, and now when I zoom in, we can actually see an edge ID associated with each edge, okay? Um, and if we were to click on our corresponding faces, you know, and we looked at the edge IDs, you'll note that this edge gets attached to there, and we'll note that here, this edge is numbered 82 here, and this edge right over here, is also numbered 82. Now, one thing that you want to do after you add your edge IDs, because you notice that we zoom in, uh, is that we want to change the scale. And the way that you do this is kind of buried, kind of deep within Pepakura, is that you go to your settings, other settings, others, and you want to change the font size of edge ID. And I like, I like uh, that size to be about 15 millimeters also. 
a little more than a half inch uh, because my eyes are bad and you can actually see it uh, and now those are much larger and you can see the edge IDs I have some of my students like to do the models without the edge IDs but you just have to organize your model better so that you know which parts correspond where but here now we have the um, edge IDs for our models okay and so now uh, what we're going to do is that we're actually going to come in to our model and we're going to begin to format the color of our model okay and the way that we do that is that we use our crayons we bring up this menu and we want to do this here we want to format the cut line and our standard is for magenta okay and we can draw all the way across that and that designates all our cut lines we go to our mountain lines we're going to change the color to blue you have to do them individually and we change the colors to blue okay and then we can go to our valley lines and those are generally also blue but we like to use like a green for those within Pepakura you can use a green oops that happened because I selected both of those I'm gonna get a green like that and you notice that gets to valley lines and I'm gonna go back to my mountain lines and I'm gonna paint those blue so you gotta make sure that you only have one selected and that's better and now when we zoom in we can see that those mountain lines are green and like sometimes also often we'll use like a um, I'll often use a red for the valley lines uh, just so that it shows up better a little better contrast uh, and I can zoom in and I know that those are red so you notice that your uh, mountain lines are dashed your valley lines are dot dashed uh, and um, your uh, cut lines are continuous line you have your text and these are the elements that will bring into um, that will bring into and forward for laser cutting as I said you can choose to or not to use your um, edge IDs I often find it very useful when you're working on big complicated models to have the edge IDs it helps out a lot one final thing is the hide edges almost flat tab here okay um, what that will do uh, your hide edges almost flat uh, that'll let you set the degree okay at which your edges appear now sometimes when you bring in like a obj uh, not so much an obj file but a dxf file every uh, polygon is cross tessellated and triangulated and often you can use this toggle to remove um, to remove some of that by adjusting this angle you can remove some of that triangular tessellation okay if you want to see all the edges in your models you uh, uncheck that and that will reveal all the edges that exist within your model but you can use that to sort of like um, to get rid of um, interior tessellated edges and oftentimes when you use uh, models that were generated in Rhino or DXF files that are innately triangulated if you want to get rid of those elements uh, you can use that tool to do that and it's a stylistic thing okay so at this point we're pretty much done we've gotten our work completed and what we want to do at this point is that we want to use uh, Pepakura to uh, output our our model files and in the next video tutorial we're going to address that issue of outputs and organizations uh, of the three elements from uh, Pepakura so that we can um, produce a DXF file that can be used for laser cutting